we are going to create a script that when attached to a model with a certain hierarchy creates a working turret able to follow a target. The hierarchy our script is going to work with is having one object being the parent of everything that rotates and having one object which is the parent of everything that elevates. Our script is going to look like this. We're going to have three parameters, one for a path to the body, the parts that rotates, one to the head, the part that elevates, and one to the target, the object we're trying to track. We're going to allow the user to select the speed in which the model elevates and rotates. We are going to allow the user to control the muzzle velocity of the projectiles being shot from the turret and we are going to use the muzzle velocity in the next video which will be all about leading the target and trying to hit the target that moves and we are also going to let the user control the minimum and maximum elevation of the turret because in some models going too much up or too much down is going to break the model. Now let's go over the parameters. We, when we initialize this object, we get the actual body, head, and target. We transfer the elevation and rotation speed from degrees to radians, because when we choose the rotation speed, we want to think in degrees, but most of Godot's functions use radians. Those three parameters are mainly going to be used in the next video on tracking a moving target, but for now, we only need the current target, which is the location of the target. And we have a flag for whether or not the turret is active, and we can set it to be false if we want the turret to not work. Now in our ready function, we test whether or not we have a head and a body. If not, we set the turret to be false, and we test that we have a valid target, and that that target has linear velocity, and if either of those is false, we set active to be false. Now in our process function, we do the following. If we are not active, we are doing nothing and we simply return. Then we update the target location and rotate and elevate the head and body. In update target location, for this video it's going to be a very simple one. We are simply going to set the current target to be the global transform of our target. And then we can start rotating and elevating. So how does that work? First of all, we get the amount we want to rotate the body. The function getLocalY works like this. First of all, we transform the current target to the head local space. We then cast it to the xz plane by using this statement here. And then we calculate the angle between forward and that projected vector. And this is going to return the angle from where the head is currently facing to our target. But angle 2 always returns a positive value, so in order to keep track of whether or not we need to rotate to the right or to the left, we take the y angle we get from this calculation and we multiply it by negative the sign of local target x. And this is going to give us both the amount we need to rotate and in which direction. Now back in rotate we take this y target and we try to rotate the body the maximum amount possible between where the body is currently heading and where the target is. So we want the same direction so we first of all take the sign of y target. We then multiply by the minimum value between the rotation speed time delta which means we first of all try to rotate as much as possible but we make sure we never rotate too much and with this statement we are going to make sure we don't go back and forth between the target and every time overshooting it and needing to go backwards. Finally when we have this value we can rotate the body that amount. So elevate works similarly but there is some differences. So first of all we get the global x value and what's the difference between get local y and get global x? 
So get local y tells us how much do we need to rotate with regards to where we are heading currently. Get global x is going to give us the absolute value we need to elevate our turret regardless of the rotation. And the reason is if every time we update the rotation we calculate the elevation, they are going to interfere with each other's calculations. So we are getting the local y and the global x. How do we get the global x? So first of all we calculate the vector between the target and the head. We project it to the xz plane and we get the angle between this vector, the projected vector, and the original vector. And this is the elevation we need. And we take the sign of local target y again because angle 2 always returns a positive value. So that way we get both the amount and the direction. Now we have the global x rotation needed. So we take the difference between the current x rotation and the desired x rotation. And we do the same trick as before. We multiply the sign of that value to get the direction with the minimum value between the speed we want to rotate and the maximum rotation possible. We take this value, we rotate the head, but then we clamp it between minimum elevation and maximum elevation to make sure we don't break the model by rotating it too much. So this is all the code. It's pretty straightforward and it does the job. The one last function, which is already implemented and we are going to go very in depth in the next video, is the get time to collision. This function will allow us to aim at a moving target and always hit it, regardless of uh, how fast or how far it is from the turret itself. So let's use this script in order to make this turret into a working turret. So first of all, we can take the script and simply attach it to the parent node and then we start assigning things. So let's assign uh, the body to the body and the head to the head. Now we can control all these parameters here. I, I'm going to leave them as is for now because this model can uh, suffer a lot from, sorry, from rotations of the head. We can basically let it rotate as much as we want. Uh, and it's pretty much ready. Let's go to our test scene. So I created this test scene and this test scene has this target following this path. And we have a first person controller which will allow us to see everything. And let's just run for a second to get a feel for what is going to happen. So we can move in this world and we see this target flying in the sky and we want our turrets to always point at this target. So let's go to our world. Let's add the turret scene. It's a little bit too big, so we can scale it down a little bit. Let's say half, half, half. And now we have a reasonable sized turret. And now all we need to do is set the target to be the red flying thing. And when I press run, you can see immediately that our turret is trying to aim at the target at all times. Let's look at another example, but now one where we need to set the minimum and maximum elevation. So let's go to our assets and go to our models. And I created a simple tank model. So let's create a new inherited scene of that tank and let's focus on it. So we can see there's a simple tank here, but if I rotate the uh, gun too much, it is going to look weird. And let's start. So uh, we can go to, to the transform here and look at the barrel and we can rotate it down a little bit. And let's say, I think this is enough. So we see negative four degrees is the maximum we are going to allow. So let's take the turret script, attach it to the parent. Let's assign everything correctly. So body to body and the barrel is going to be the head and we're want the minimum elevation to be no more than negative four. And uh, we can also set the maximum elevation. Let's see something that we like. I think this is enough, maybe even a little bit too excessive. So let's say uh, this is good. So let's say 22. So maximum elevation is going to be 22. And 
let's reset everything, make sure we don't have any leftover changes. And the tank is also ready to go, so let's save it. Let's go to our main scene, to our world, and let's add the tank. Move it slightly to the right. And if I press, oh sorry, let's assign the target first. And now I can press run. And you can see we have this missile turret and a tank very menacingly always trying to aim at this flying target in the sky. And whatever we do, the you can see that the, the tank tries to aim higher, but he can't. One final example, I have a model of a phalanx. So let's create a new inherited scene here. And let's again focus on the phalanx. And again, it's a very simple process. I'm simply going to add the script assign everything accordingly, save it, go to our main scene, add the phalanx, and you can move it slightly to the side, assign the target, and if I press run, you can see that it's starting to look more and more gloomy for our target. So that's it for today. Uh, in the next video, we're going to tackle aiming at a moving target and always hitting regardless of speed and distance. And there is a very cool mathematical trick uh, that solved this problem very nicely. So if you're interested in this type of uh, content, uh, I would very appreciate it if you sub subscribe and watch the next video also. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.